All right. Does it say it's recording on your end? Yes, it's recording on my end. Okay, we are in. Okay, so. Hello, Soch 105 students. <laughs> yes, this is chapter four. The, the cruel, cruel hand. Hand. All right. Um, this Our is. Our names are all listed down at the bottom. I'm Cece. I'm Ashley. And we have Amy, Austin, and Brady in our group. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> this chapter was uh, pretty straightforward. Um, I really enjoyed reading it. It brought, a, it brought a lot of insightful truth to what is currently going on today. Um, all right, let's get started. Let's, okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, our chapter summary, The Cruel Hand. The chapter. The fourth chapter in the new Jim Crow's focuses primarily on the experiences and difficulties that those who are released from prison face when back into society that might not accept them. Alexander describes how hard it is to integrate back into society that has so much against convict criminals, such as the difficulties in finding work and housing, etc. Places to stay are hard to come by fresh out of prison, as public housing is completely off limits and private owned properties are allowed to shun people away at their own discretion. This usually results in releases staying with friends or families if they have any. This among other factors complicates finding work even more. She brings up the fact that most private employers are able to freely discriminate against convict felons even if it was just a misdemeanor. Even though that violates current employment laws, she also provides the catch-22 that many face. They cannot get a job because of their conviction but their paroles are dependent on getting and maintaining gainful employment. This, along with other factors, place a stigma around nonviolent offenders that hinders them for the rest of their lives. Some of the key concepts and terms that we came up with all fall under the Jim Crow's Y'all remember the Jim Crow's from the beginning that was defined as the former practice of segregation of Black in the U.S. In this chapter, we see how these implications are still being practiced, but with felons. For example, the Jim Crow's made it legal to deny housing based on race, and now housing is denied based on whether you were a felon, whether you are a felon. There are five issues that fit under that broad category. The first issue is housing. Anti-Drug Abuse Act of 1998, public housing agencies do not need to exercise discretion if an attendant or attendant guest engages in criminal activity, such as can develop their own exclusion criteria to deny eligibility for even the most minor offenses following the one strike and you're out. <clears throat> rule. Issue number two is work. Work is a main priority when coming out of prison. So, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> uh, which is the most un uh, oh, one of the main priorities when coming out of prison and when finding a job they face discriminate discrimination. You know, in this chapter, it's based on previous offenders. For example, checking the box to indicate that one has been convicted of a crime it's on housing, social, so, sorry, it's on housing, school applications, welfare, and, and so on. Um, the stigma of having a criminal record also has a profound impact. Almost one third of young black men in this country are out of work. Issue number three, which is debt coming out of prison, which is, you know, most likely um, those people have uh, a pile of debt example, collection fees, child support, which is very hard to keep up, uh, resulting in ending back in jail. Issue number four is food. Clinton, Clinton's reconstructing of welfare in 1996 puts a five-year limit on benefits, such as bans individuals with drug-related felonies from federal funding public assistance. So if you have been incarcerated, the state of being confined in prison. May, um, a quote on page 166 says, many ex-offenders experience an existential agonist against with their permanent social exclusion. Henry, a young African-American convicted of it, finally explains, you broke the law, you bad, you broke the law, ban, you're not a part of us, viewing them as less of a person in our society. Hmm. Um, one of the key 
points that we related from previous chapters was definitely that some of these uh, felons are being convicted for minor offenses and yet are consequently suffering the long-term effects, such as seen in chapter three, we have the example of Clifford, who was a grieving father who was falsely accused and had the and later had the charges dropped, yet he still couldn't apply for food stamps, uh, welfare, and he couldn't find researchers to get back in his feet. Um, we have Irma's story as well, that was very tragic. A mother who was also falsely accused of carrying drugs, who lost everything as well. So these are just examples from chapter three that we related to our current chapter of people who are being convicted for the most minor offense yet are suffering the five issues of housing, work, debt, food, and um, so on. All right. Good job, Cece. Thank you. Okay, so uh, felons don't have access to any assistance that is needed for uh, those five things that welfare, housing, um, financial aid, voting rights, employment. Um, on page 148, it talks about the basic human need, the need to be self-sufficient, to, to contribute, to support your family, and to add value to society. Um, it also states that assistant, assistance helps create stability. Um, and I use the examples because I was focused on the personal experience or like relating it to my personal experience. And I related it to um, me using financial aid and scholarships to help pay for school. Um, I also considered the fact that I have health benefits that help pay for or cover me when I'm ill and unemployment that, you know, if I were ever to be let go from my job, I could rely on that to help me stay on my feet and create stability within my um, family unit so that I could pay my bills and take care of myself. Um, unfortunately for these felons, they're not able to have um, these basic useful tools that the rest of us have uh, to get themselves together again. Um, so, and continuing to get personal um, within the chapter, I focused on page 167, which was uh, passing that and uh, the redux. And it talked about how families of incarcerated people um, lie about uh, their incarcerated family members. Um, they um, are coping with the stigmas behind uh, having that family member in prison. Um, they're not talking about that member, which means they're repressing um, their feelings and, and having to deal with this stuff on their own um, and harboring a lot of shame. Uh, I have a relative um, that my family doesn't talk about. Um, the family acts as if he doesn't exist because he brings a sense of shame to the family. It's, it's embarrassing and it's hard to even explain to people. Um, like would they even, would they understand? Is it easier to just omit and pass? Um, last thing my family wants is to have him wreck like the family image. Um, as sad as that sounds, um, I never realized I never realized that it was um, shame that my family was feeling. I never considered the fact that, um, you know, my family was trying to pass as a family that's free from these kinds of issues. I think more families are dealing with this than we should like to because of the embarrassment behind it. Um, so moving on. Oh, and so I, I posed a question. Does anyone else have a family member um, in prison or that has been in prison and on probation um, that is kind of dealing with similar issues of like um, shame? All right. So this next slide is um, jumping into what, I, what would this portion be? The, the current event or... Yeah. Related to the real, real world or whatever. So, um, Brady chose Ray Rice example. 
um, calling it an example of a felon in society, says, do we understand that it is indefinite, um, that this indefinite suspension, um, that it, that because of his indefinite suspension that he might never be playing the NFL again or work anywhere. Um, so Ray Rice, and I'll, I'm going to actually skip a slide so that I can uh, make more sense to you. But uh, so basically, um, I'll just read it. So it's provided is a real life example of a felon who was faced with the hardship of society after release from prison. So Ray Rice was put in prison um, for getting into a physical altercation with his uh, girlfriend at the time. So it says in this chapter, it talks about how felons are released from prison and put back into society where they're not accepted at all. So there are many examples of this. And as uh, Brady was sitting and trying to figure out um, a felon or someone to put into the presentation, he thought about famous athletes and how they're arrested all the time and face adversity through the league or the club um, after they are convicted. So you see on the news um, of athletes getting arrested for anything from DUIs to manslaughter, such as Aaron Hernandez of the New England Patriots a few years ago. Um, the real life example that um, Brady chose was Ray Rice. Ray Rice was a running back for the Baltimore Ravens who was later convicted for domestic abuse towards his girlfriend in the elevator. We did have a clip of the video, but it wouldn't play. So we just removed it. Plus it was pretty brutal. So um, the, um, the talk about, let's see, violence. The, the, okay. I, uh, the article of Ray Rice talks about how he's facing, um, facing the return to the NFL with indefinite suspension. Um, let's see. It says, uh, let's see the quote in my slide. Okay, which also includes that he may never work again anywhere because of uh, his conviction. In this chapter, it talks about how in job applications, rental um, agreements, loan applications, forms for welfare benefits, school applications, petitions for licenses, forming um, the general public that um, felons are not wanted. Um, and this is a part of uh, chapter four on page 141. Um, let's see. It says, I thought this was an interesting quote. It says, uh, Rice later won an appeal that reinstated him back into the NFL. However, he hasn't played a down since. Like, do you think he ever really will play? <laughs> I mean, what would, the, what would people say? It's like when, it reminds me of, uh, what's his name, uh, CC with the dogs? He did the dog fighting. His dog. Career, um, he played for Atlanta. He played for the Falcons. He was a quarterback who got in trouble for dog fighting, even though he wasn't actually doing the dog fighting, but it was being done in his house by some friends. And he got kicked out of the NFL. And he's like, anyways, it just made me think of that. Moving on. <laughs> um, now I'm curious. What was his name? Oh, gosh. What was his name? Let's see. Was it recently? Last um, it was a few years oh, ago. Oh, Michael. Michael Vick. Yeah. Yes, Michael Vick. Mm -hmm. That guy never like was able to bounce back from that. His mm -hmm. career was over. Yeah. Um, so that's very similar to what these people are dealing with. Um, but anyways, uh, it says this is very uh, similar for Ray Rice. Um, let's see. If he was trying to fill out an application to reenter the NFL, would he have to check the box? Um, he would have to check the box in the application that read, have you ever committed a felony with yes in today's society the boss or the nfl commissioner will not allow criminals to uh to be brought back into the organization of the nfl because it does not want its league to look um to be looked at um as full of criminals in the article it does state that um he was reinstated into the nfl but if he um was reinstated into the NFL, but even if he were brought back into the league, no team would sign him because of his violent act. Um, I also posted this quote into my slides as well. Let's see, Ray Rice has, um, has a high likelihood of never playing the NFL again because of his acts. I'm, I'm losing my, my place here. Um, 
a crime is still a crime when it comes to reality. So um, this doesn't necessarily fit, you know, the drug offenses and stuff that we're dealing with, but I guess it is like an example of, um, you know, how it's hard to bounce back from, from things like that that occur. Um, okay. Discussion questions. Um, number one, what reason do people, oh, we forgot to fix that. Okay. What, <laughs> what reason do people have to justify um, that felons are the one social group in America we have permission to hate? How do racial bias play a role in how we view people in society as felons? Ooh, interesting. Um, I just recently, you know, okay, so we're going to talk about this real quick. You know, the recent school shooting, that awful recent school shooting. Oh, yeah. So my girlfriend put a post on Instagram and it had the picture of the guy and then it had like a shade scale, like a skin shade scale. Uh -huh. And then it said like, it had like all these like basically white skin shades and it said um, mental. Yeah, yeah, did you see it? Yeah. It was like mental. Nice. Like, at, like at what shade of skin color are you considered like mentally ill or, you know, or. Or a terrorist, yeah, or a right? Terrorist. Like once you get past a certain shade, you're a terrorist. And then the darker it got, you know, you were, you were. You right. Were funny. Yeah. Right. So this guy, they're saying like, he's mentally ill. He's a sick kid. Like he's not a terrorist, but if he was a couple shade lighter or if he hadn't have been associated with the, you know, white supremacist groups, but he was Muslim, can you imagine? Or mm -hmm. do you, or what would happen if the FBI got a tip that a Muslim guy said he wanted to shoot up school? Do you think they would have ignored it then? Probably not. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interessante. Yeah, very good point. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's 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 awesome how you related this question well not awesome like that you were able to relate this question to something that literally just happened like a week or like a few days ago like this is something that is currently happening right now it's not like we're it's like oh we're reading this book and it's like oh from you know years ago no this is a current issue and mm -hmm. it should definitely bring some insight to all of us yeah so i mean i think that really shows what, what, what shade, what the shade of felon is, you know, like, <laughs> you know. right. Um, how does plea bargaining negatively affect the defendant in the long run? Should the court disclose this information to defendants before they make their decisions? Uh, yes, they should, but they don't. Yeah. Right. Alexander states it in the book as well, that they just, they don't, they don't do it. They don't let them know they're right. And then they're stuck in the real world, again, facing those five issues, finding work, finding a place to stay, trying to get food, trying to, you know, just stay on their feet. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they understand that, that it means that all of those rights are taken away. Yeah, please, you, you confessed. What do you mean? They just think they're taking the lesser of two evils, but yeah, no. You know, without all the facts, you know, you're just, tr you're counting on your public defender or, you know. <clears throat> and then, you know, we have to take into consideration who are not being told their rights. Like, is it the rich, you know, white people or like the lower, you know. Right. Although you mean the ones who can afford great yeah. lawyers to tell them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Yeah, it's crazy. But, um, so let's see. I know. Amy put, even though these plea bargains seem like the better deal because it's less prison time, it can negatively affect their lives after sentence or sentence. Um, in our opinion, says the court should inform defendants about the possible consequences of the plea bargain so the defendants can make a decision uh, with all of the relevant information. Mm -hmm. So true. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And more discussion questions. Uh, would it be beneficial to have all prisoners receive access to public housing before being released? Why or why not? Um, I personally was like, yes, of course, you know, so they wouldn't have to deal with all these, you know, issues and, you know, struggle and then end up back in jail because that's usually what happens. But as I step back and kind of put myself in society's views, I kind of was like, you know, what they view them as these criminals, you know, you, we have our own people right now that 
don't have housing, you know, they're going to get super mad at that. Um, <clears throat> that these prisoners are getting this opportunity. But I, I think it's just like a conflict of interest of who, who's right and who's wrong. Right, who gets who gets the housing? Yeah, who gets who who gets the help? Who doesn't? Well, he committed this. I didn't. I should get it. Like, but at the same time, it's like okay, no, but they need it. They're coming from nothing. You know, they're right. going to end up back in there. We're trying to prevent that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I mean, we're paying for them. We're we're housing them regardless, whether in yeah. or out of prison. Like, we're paying for it. So yeah, you know, we might as well try to. Um, you know, rehabilitate them and get them back into society so our tax dollars aren't going to prisons. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so question number two, or number one, one. <laughs> we are number one twice, so. Um, should um, employers be able to discriminate against felons? Why or why not? I don't think so. Again, I think it depends on the offense, right? Yeah. Exactly what I was gonna say. Depending on the offense, like we don't want no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah, you yeah know. I already know. <laughs> um, okay. And then, what are the similarities and differences between slaves and our nation's early history and criminals today? Ooh, that's a good question. This goes back to the example of, of the Jim Crow's that I gave about how like it was okay to discriminate you know housing based on your color and mm -hmm. now it's like based on a felony so that's kind mm -hmm. of the similarities that is still going on today with the criminal yeah did this change the verbiage right from mm -hmm. from slave to to felon. prisoner or to felon yep convict yeah synonyms and then last question, after reading the chapter and reading the article posted uh, by this Ray is Rice. Like relating, yeah, this is relating to the Ray Rice. Thank right. Uh, what other athletes come to mind that are considered felons? Hmm. hmm. Something to think about. I watch a lot of sports. <laughs> Wait. Well, something really good. Just kidding. Um, hmm. I, the only one I could think of was the Michael Vick thing, but I know there's probably more, but. I, I think it's like celebrities, you know, who have been like. Oh my gosh. I know like all these uh, people that started that Me Too, uh, all the sexual. Um, yeah. Gosh, why am I brain, brain farting? But all these actors and actresses, you know, act, all these actors that are being, coming out, talking about sexual abuse and um like that kevin spacey mm -hmm. like he's never gonna he, i bet you he'll never be in another movie ever again because people will see him as a pedophile forever you know people just don't bounce back from this mm -hmm. kind of stuff but i think with i think the main point is with these small offenses and these drug yeah. offenses especially when um i remember there was one part of the reading it said that they were trying to crack down in Seattle, right? Do you remember this part where it said yeah, yeah, yeah. they were trying to crack down on drugs in the city? And even though people were dying of heroin in that city, they were going to areas where crack was being sold or where mm -hmm. crack was being used, which is predominantly black areas instead of where the real problem was in the other areas, you know, just to, <clears throat> oh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm on soapbox. Anyways. This is all very interesting. We hope you all learned something and that we didn't bore you to death. I know. Plus, you all read the chapters, so you know what we're talking about. So. Yeah. And uh, for the rest of the group, good job. And we hope that we did you proud on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Go have team. A good Saturday. Okay. Have a good Saturday. All right. Yeah. I'm going to stop this thing. How do I stop recording? Let's see. Um, stop video. Is that it? Yeah. I hear you so okay wait 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 um it's stop sharing oh stop sh pause share stop, no, share stop sharing stop sharing okay stop share boom okay it's still recording oh is it shoot no, oh it's on me oh no <laughs> remember it's stop sharing and then end meeting oh okay end meeting yeah um in meeting for 